I have become friendly with a student at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School whose name is Kyle Cashew. He first started becoming prominent when he was speaking out in favor of gun rights, even though he was a witness to what happened at the Parkland, at the Parkland High School. And the entire left basically ignored him. And so I pointed out to the media that they should stop ignoring survivors who disagreed with them. And so he started getting booked a little bit more. And one of the things that has happened in the past couple of days is that there are a bunch of people on the left who have attacked him. And the reason this is relevant is because, of course, there was this massive boycott launched against Laura Ingram by the left, suggesting that she'd been mean to another Parkland survivor named David Hogg. David Hogg, of course, had been the kid who'd gone on TV and suggested that everyone who disagreed with him was basically a murderer with blood on their hands taking NRA blood money. And Laura Ingram said that he was whiny about his college admissions, an ill-advised comment, and then there was a boycott against her. Well, Kyle was attacked in much more nefarious fashion by the left, and no one seems to be commenting on this other than to say that the guy who did it is kind of crazy. So the guy who did it is a guy named Kurt Eichenwald. Uh, Kurt Eichenwald, on his, bio, on his bio on Twitter five days ago, it said he was an MSNBC contributor and a Vanity Fair contributing editor, right? That's what it said on his, on his biography. Well, a few days ago, he ripped into Kyle on Twitter. I pointed this out, and MSNBC started losing sponsors. And so MSNBC came out and they said, well, actually, we, we, we've not hired him for, for, since, February, 20, for, since February. He hasn't been able to, to really do anything since February hasn't been with MSNBC. So first, Kurt had to, had to remove the MSNBC contributor part of his Twitter profile. So suddenly it just said, Kurt Eichenwald, Vanity Fair contributing editor, New York Times bestselling author. Okay, then yesterday, Kurt sent me this wild email, this wild, wild email. And here's what it said. It said, Ben, I'm working on an article about you and your relationship with Kyle Cashew, the kid from Parkland. I'm not going to be using his name for reasons that will become apparent. A few items. One, he has been actively working to trick journalists he believes work for non-Fox television networks into taking any action in something in which his Twitter account was linked. Two, he has been coordinating with some of the trolls involved with these people. Three, he in fact coordinated with the other guy with the podcast who was demanding my respect. He used the same attack on me as the other guy, which was unprovoked. He used this garbage pushed by conservative media and leftists that I am a fan of tentacle porn. And that's, that's what he actually wrote because about a year ago, uh, it turned out that Kurt Eichenwald tweeted out a link accidentally to tentacle porn. Uh, and uh, I, I think that was the story. Uh, and, and, or he tweeted out a picture of himself and in the background of his computer was a picture of tentacle porn, something like that. And then he said that he was just using it for research purposes or he wanted to show his kids he was, his kids had said something about tentacle porn. He didn't believe that it was real, so he, he went looking for it. In any case, this became a, a point of humor against uh, Kurt Eichenwald. And this email that he sent to me about Kyle goes on and on and on and on. I mean, it is a long, long email. And the best part of it was where he says this. So remember, all of this started with Kurt Eichenwald saying that the boycott against Laura Ingram was justified because Laura Ingram had been mean to a Parkland survivor. Kyle, Cash, uh, Kyle Kashuv is a Parkland survivor. Here is what Kurt Eichenwald wrote in this email to me that he sent to me, this crazy email. Quote, I engaged in a DM conversation with Kyle, which was quite disturbing. I consulted a friend of mine who is a psychiatrist, a political conservative, since that seems so important to you. And based on what he read, the psychiatrist said the following. One, Kyle is in desperate need of psychiatric help or support. The psychiatrist did not have enough information to assess if the issues he saw in the conversation were the consequence of the shooting, being psychologically unprepared for being thrust into the conservative media as a go-to kid, or if there's an underlying pathology that preceded these events. Two, Kyle is obsessed with you. In fact, our DM conversation, with you, which involved a lot of irrational rage, seemed to have been sparked by my asking you to debate. And then he, he goes on, and finally, at the very end of this email... He asks a series of questions suggesting that I am running Kyle, that I am the nefarious for that Kyle doesn't have his own opinions. He wasn't conservative before he met me, that Kyle has been getting his cues from me. Now, listen, I've openly said on the program that I talk with Kyle. They're like, there's no secret about this. I think Kyle's a good kid. I think he's trying to do the right thing. And I think he deserves support in the same way that I'm sure that David Hogg talks with a bunch of folks on the left, including Media Matters. There's nothing wrong with that. But the best part of this email is where Kurt says at the very end of it, don't forward this email to Kyle. He does not need to know what a psychiatrist is saying about him. You have heard him enough. So this guy, who purported to be a Vanity Fair contributing editor, he sends me an email accusing Kyle Cash of a Parkland survivor of being psychologically deficient, right, to having a psychiatric problem, and then says at the end of the email that I am harming him and I shouldn't forward the email. So naturally, I did what any rational person would do when you receive a crazy email like this. I immediately posted it on Twitter, the entire text of it. And Vanity Fair responded, 
by sending out a notice that Kurt Eichenwald no longer works for Vanity Fair, that he hasn't worked for Vanity Fair for several years. So Kurt's Twitter biography shrunk yet again, and now he was no longer an MSNBC contributor or a Vanity Fair contributing editor. He, uh, he actually emailed, I believe it was Brian Stelter at CNN, claiming that, no, he was still a Vanity Fair contributing editor. And Vanity Fair was like, uh, no, you're not. And you haven't written for us since 2014. So all of this is to say, listen, I don't want to pick on a guy when he's down, kick a guy when he's down. But all of this is to say that there are people on the left who do attack Parkland survivors. And the blowback on them does not extend to their, to their venues. It doesn't really extend to their outlets. It's been largely ignored, right? Joan Walsh, as we played yes, as we as we played yesterday, said some nasty things about Kyle Cashew. There's been no boycott effort against CNN. When the left wants to boycott something, they're doing it for political purposes. The right usually is better than that, and usually doesn't engage in these kind of boycotts unless it is a reverse boycott, like they're boycotting Chick Fil A, and we say, okay, we'll all go shop at Chick Fil A just to show that we're not going to allow you to boycott institutions we like out of business. But it's amazing what the, is it the same left that says you can't target a Parkland shooter. Uh, it was, it can't target rather a Parkland survivor will say that if it's a Parkland survivor we don't like, that we will actually go have them psychologically evaluated without their knowledge and then say that you should not tell the person that that happened. It's an amazing thing. And frankly, I think that Kyle has a very solid legal case for defamation against Kurt. So we'll see how all of that goes. But things certainly are crazy.